it's time to have another discussion about female erections. Now this is actually our second video about female erections, and I have to tell you, our first video on this topic is one of our most successful videos at over 20 million views. And what's interesting about that first video is that I made it after making a male erection video, thinking that we needed to get a video out there for our female audience. But when you look at the analytics of our first female erection video, 88.7% of those views came from males. So I guess we'll see what happens with this video. But today we're going to kind of refer to this topic as the second female erection, because we are going to cover the area known as the G-spot. We'll talk about its anatomy, location, and some of the theories as to how it contributes to arousal and climax. And I say theories because there are a few controversies and unknowns about this area, and we'll talk about why this is. It's definitely going to be an interesting one. So let's jump right into this reproductive anatomical awesomeness. The G-spot is named after the German physician Ernst Grafenberg. Dr. Grafenberg described an erogenous zone within the anterior wall of the vaginal canal that he believed was linked to heightened sexual arousal and even climax. However, the scientific community remains a little divided on its existence and the role it plays in sexual arousal. And we'll get into that in just a minute, but let's go into a little bit more detail about its location. Again, the G-spot is thought to be located on the anterior wall of the vagina, about an inch or two inside. So if we take a look at this cadaver dissection, this is a sagittal cut right through the midline, and we're gonna be taking a look at the right side of the pelvis from this angle. And just to orient you a little further, here's the pubic bone, here we have the uterus, the anus, and here is the vaginal canal, with the anterior portion being here. So the G-spot would be located about right here. Now the G-spot is described as a small spongy area, and when stimulated, it can swell and become more sensitive, leading to a sensation different from clitoral stimulation. Some women report experiencing intense orgasms, which can differ from clitoral orgasms in terms of sensation and intensity often described as deeper, surging, and frankly, some females have a hard time describing the exact sensation. But this is not always consistent from one female to another, as some may report that G-spot stimulation does not lead to significant pleasure. And this is why the existence of the G-spot can be somewhat controversial in the scientific community, because not only are the anecdotal reports a little mixed, but some studies also have produced some mixed results with some failing to find distinct anatomical evidence of the G-spot, while others have identified areas of increased sensitivity. But what do some of these studies actually say? But before we go into those research studies about female erectile tissue and the explanations surrounding the G-spot, let's talk about erectifying or reactivating our hair follicles with the sponsor of today's video, iRestore. iRestore makes this incredible piece of technology called the iRestore Elite Device and this has been shown to be an effective option for hair loss. It uses Lumitech technology that consists of 500 medical grade lasers and LEDs. And because it uses both lasers and LEDs, you get more uniform and enhanced coverage and thorough treatment of all the hair follicles compared to other low level laser therapy devices. It also is FDA cleared and is a medication free option to help with hair loss. And as I've mentioned, has been clinically shown to help support hair growth. It only needs to be used for 12 minutes a day and the triple wavelength power ensures deeper and more effective treatment that can help enhance cellular metabolism in the scalp, improve blood flow, and reduce inflammation, which are factors that contribute to hair growth. iRestore also wants you to be completely satisfied with your purchase. So if you aren't 100% satisfied with your results, they have a 12 month money back guarantee. So if you're interested, visit the link on screen and use our coupon code IOHA to get $625 off the iRestore Elite device. We will also include that information in the description below. And now, back to those research studies. One study conducted in 2012 used ultrasound to examine the anterior vaginal wall in women who have reported having G-spot orgasms. The researchers found increased thickness and vascularization, as well as a higher density of nerve endings in the area that correspond to the G-spot, suggesting there is a difference in this tissue here. Other studies have looked at the relationship between the G-spot and the clitoris. Some researchers propose that the G-spot might be part of a larger complex involving the clitoris, urethra, and vaginal wall, all working together to enhance sexual pleasure. And speaking of the urethra, next to the urethra are the paraurethral glands, 
which are also known as the Skene's glands. These glands produce a milk-like fluid that help to lubricate the urethral opening. But there are two things that are interesting about these periurethral glands. One, they are located near the G-spot, and two, these are thought to be the homologous structures to the male prostate gland. And homologous structures are structures that develop from the same embryonic tissue. But this is another theory or idea as to why the G-spot may cause arousal, as some males report arousal from prostate stimulation, and so the homologous females may do the same. Now I do want to jump back to where I talked about the difference in climax from G-spot stimulation versus climax from clitoral stimulation. A possible explanation for this difference is thought to be due to the nerves that innervate the clitoris versus the nerves that innervate the vaginal wall where the G-spot is thought to be located. The clitoris is innervated by the dorsal nerve of the clitoris, which is a branch of a nerve called the pudendal nerve. Now what's interesting about this term pudendal is that it comes from the Latin word pudenda, meaning external genitals. But the word pudenda is derived from pudendum, which means parts to be ashamed of. Now, here at the Institute of Human Anatomy, we do not believe in shaming anyone's genitals. I'm just acting as the messenger of comical word origins. But the point is that the dorsal nerve of the clitoris from this pudendal nerve is bringing in what is known as somatic sensation. Somatic sensations are sensations that are much more pinpoint external sensations that you are able to better localize. Like if someone pinches your skin, you know exactly where you're being touched. Whereas the vaginal canal has a mixture of how it's innervated. And what I mean by this is that the lower third of the vaginal canal is also innervated by the pudendal nerve, which means it would bring in more of that pinpoint, well-localized somatic sense, the same type of sense the clitoris would have. But the upper two thirds of the vaginal canal is innervated by nerve fibers that provide more of a visceral sensation. Visceral refers to internal organs, and visceral sense give more of an internal feeling that is more diffuse, generalized, and harder to pinpoint. But they still can be quite intense. Like appendicitis can cause quite the intense amount of pain, but sometimes people feel it in their central abdomen rather than right at the point where the appendix is actually located. And this is also part of the reason why people can have referred pain to an area where the structure actually isn't located. But the idea is that maybe it is the differences in these nerves and the transition from somatic sense to visceral sense in the vaginal canal that could give an explanation as to why some females can describe a G-spot orgasm and even orgasms from stimulation of the cervix as though it's deeper, surging, maybe even cosmic. And you probably did notice that I said orgasms from stimulation of the cervix, meaning the cervix of the uterus. And yes, this is a reported occurrence by some females, but like the G-spot, it doesn't happen to all. So we've essentially explored a few explanations of the G-spot. Is it a possible extension of the clitoris where some females may have a higher density of nerve endings than others? Is it possibly part of a greater complex that involves the clitoris, urethra, and those homologous glands to the prostate called the periurethral glands? Or could it even have something to do with the differences in nerve innervation? Well, Unfortunately, there still is not a completely definitive answer, but regardless of the answer, we can't really ignore all of the reports from females about their experiences with this area. But because there is variation from female to female on whether or not stimulation of this area will be pleasurable and or lead to climax, it kind of still just means that there's really only one way to find out about the G-spot's existence, and that is through continued scientific exploration. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel, everyone, and hopefully you learned some cool information in today's video. Like and subscribe if you feel the need. Leave some comments down below, and we'll see you next time.